Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. I hope you guys are all having a beautiful day today, and I hope that you are ready to join me on a slightly impromptu trip down new makeup lane. <laughs> because normally when I film these videos, I, I wait until I've like gathered some more new makeup. You know, I, I wait over a period of time and I try to gather new makeup that you guys are really curious about and kind of present it all at once. But uh, for this video, let me tell you, <laughs> the products were so requested that literally no one wants me to wait. So um, I thought I would just sit down and film this for you guys really quickly and it's dive into the stuff that I know you are super curious about. That way you know if it's worth saving for, you know, waiting for, all the good things. So before I get going into this and I zoom in the camera and we start application, I do want to mention if you're new here or if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so before you leave and turn on your post notifications because uh, I do upload three new videos a week. They go up Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's a bright and early upload around 7 a.m. my time, uh, which I live in northern Michigan for those of you that don't know. Again, if you're new here. And then if you would ever like more content, interaction, jokes, laughter, just randomness throughout the day, um, I'm also available over on Instagram and on Twitter, which will both be linked down below. And I'm not gonna lie, okay, I'm definitely more active over on Instagram. Like, I love hanging out in the stories. I love doing those weird little quizzes and just, lo I love sharing my life with you guys over there, posting random photos, doing a little bit of plus size fashion, that sort of thing, making little IG videos of when I do my makeup, the whole shebang. So definitely subscribe here, follow me over on Instagram, over on Twitter. So again, if you're into any of that, everything will be linked down below. And I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would check me out, especially over on Instagram, because for those of you that don't know, I used to upload five days a week. And so going down to three days a week, sometimes I just miss people. Sometimes I miss human interaction, okay? I live in Northern Michigan. All we have are cows and tractors. So that's the end of that. Okay, now let's go ahead. I'm gonna zoom the camera in and we're gonna get started. Boom. Also, really quickly, before I forget, because I know I'm going to get questions, I just did my little press-on nail manicure. This isn't sponsored. I buy these myself, and I am absolutely obsessed with them. And just because I always get asked, I figured I would share. These are from Impress Press-on Manicure. That's the company that makes them. And uh, this is their collab that they did with Rebecca Minkoff. They actually did, I think, eight different designs or something like that with her. And these are in the style Glitterati. And they are so freaking cute. I have my little accent nail here and then all of just the light pink little tip like gradient moments. Oh my God, they're so cute, guys. I love these so much. And just in case you're curious like me and you also love press-ons because I just placed I just placed this order off of their website. Um, again, not sponsored, nothing like that. I just, I just love these. Um, I also ordered this one, which I'm so excited about and I just show you because again, if you're like me, you might really enjoy these. This isn't from the Rebecca Minkoff collab, but this is in the version Hello Girls and it's a medium length. And I just thought these were so cute because they have that little like chevron situation at the bottom. Oh my God, they're just adorable. Oh my God, and then this one is from her collab. Look at these. Like, I don't know when this turned into a press-on nail haul. I'm sorry, um, but also I'm not sorry because they're adorable. But this is also from the Rebecca Minkoff collab, and this is in Sunset Beach. And look at these. Oh my God, they're like a soft matte color scheme. <gasps> oh my God, just take me to heaven and leave me there, honey. I think these are so freaking cute. I did pick up, it looks like two more. I was just rummaging through the box. I grabbed two more from her collab. This is in Blue Haze. And then I grabbed this one just cause it looked kind of edgy, kind of like, ooh, rawr. Uh, <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> but this is in the shade Ibiza Nights and it has um, like the triangle effect to it. And I just think these are so freaking cute. You guys, I'm absolutely obsessed. Anyways, I just thought I would share that with you. That's what I'm wearing today. This is what I will be wearing in the future. So stay tuned. And um, yeah, I just, I absolutely love them. Thought I would share it. All right. So anyways, let's go ahead and start talking about the actual makeup. Let's start, you know, moving and grooving through this process. I think just to get a base on just for some primer, I'm going to go in with a little Tatcha silk canvas and I'm just gonna take I mean, there's barely any there I just dip my finger in and then I work it through the t-zone and I really like to massage this in to my more porous areas just to help smooth everything out. While that soaks into the skin, we're gonna go ahead and move on and start talking about foundation. And for that, I have Benefit's newest release. This is their Hello Happy Air Stick Foundation. And they did send this to me, which is why I have so many shades. I have it in one, two, three, and four. And if you follow me over on Instagram, I think I talked about this, I wanna say last week, which is another good reason to follow me because you see things there before you'll see them here. You'll get sneak peeks, you know, all that good stuff, swatching, whatnot. 
that because I mentioned while I was over there that um, I didn't want to open up all four of them. I only opened up the lightest two because those ones then can still remain clean, hygienic, and I can, you know, give them, re-gift them, that sort of thing. And I don't have to worry about them being contaminated and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and leave three and four alone and I'm going to try to work with one and two if I can. Anyways, about the coverage, this is where I was going with this. Um, I noticed when I was just on Instagram, you know, and I massaged them into my hand, they don't seem to have a lot of coverage. Like you can still see the blue coming through like from my veins and whatnot. So I don't feel like, again, that this is going to be a really strong coverage product. And because I really want to be able to focus and like see the other stuff I'm going in with today as well, you know, the bronzer and the blush and whatnot, I, I really want to be careful with my base and make sure that I do everything I can to make it look, you know, as, as solid a medium coverage as possible. So I'm actually going to do a little spot concealing. This is my YSL All Hours Concealer, and this is in the shade 0.5. And it actually works really well for me as a, um, like a cover-up spot concealer shade. It just blends into my skin effortlessly. I'm just going to go ahead and buff that concealer in. I just applied a very, very light amount of it, and I am buffing it in here. This is the Real Techniques 424 brush, which I've talked a lot about on this channel. I really, really love it. It's a good adjustable fluffy brush. And then from here, you can see, you know, it didn't cancel everything out. It was just a good way to dampen that redness. And now we can start going in with some of this foundation. So I'm actually going to start off with shade number two. And I think I'm just going to start applying it just like this. And then maybe I'll go in. I'm going to buff this in first and see how it looks. And then we'll kind of go from there to see how much, if any, of shade one I need. And then to buff in the foundation stick, I'm gonna use my Morphe JS1, which by the way, if you missed it, I did just do a brush declutter, which I will link up here. And in that video, I talk a lot about, you know, what my favorite brushes are and why, and just the whole bit. So if you're curious about what brushes I use and, you know, that sort of thing, definitely check the video out. All right, so we have quite the situation on our hands. This foundation looks uh, dreadful and I am not here for it. Like over all of my uh, hyperpigmentation, anything with raised texture, like right here, I don't even know if you can see it on camera, but right there, it looks so bad. And like here, here, it just does not look good. In like my smoother areas right over here, I have like more of a smoother upper cheekbone. Um, and like right here, it's the same thing. In those areas, this foundation does look really nice. But in the areas where I have raised texture or like really intense pores, like on my nose, that sort of thing, it's really settling out and it's just not, it's not robust enough to like stand alone and like stand on top of those areas. I think for me, as of right now, that's where I'm at with this. Like it's a decent foundation, but I think it's gonna look best on someone that already has pretty nice skin, like not someone with a ton of texture and pores and, you know, all of what I have going on right here. So again, first impression, but so far, ooh, not my favorite. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on from there. And I'm just going to go in with some concealer. And for that, I'm going to go in with my Dose of Colors concealer. This is in the shade 03 Fair. And I'm just going to take this through the normal areas, a little bit on the chin, a little bit on the jawline, just to help kind of correct the, the map of my face. Because again, shade two was a little bit dark for me. Sorry, but doesn't that concealer just look so satisfying? Like under the eyes, it looks beautiful. The color is actually really nice. I think on camera, it comes off a little bit more intense than it does in real life, but it's super, super pretty. I've just been really enjoying this concealer because I went through, you know, this past week and I cleaned up and whatnot. And I found this one sitting in my bin and I really liked it last time I played with it. And I was like, my God, like I should be playing with this more. Also, yes, we can just talk about it. I never do this on camera, but yes, my earrings are up and over my ear. And when I'm getting ready sometimes, if I'm wearing hoops and I need them to get out of my way, I just, you know, I just pop them up there real quick. You know, then I powder, I do my stuff and I put them back down. And again, I never do it on camera because I know how it looks. It looks, <laughs> it looks like I don't know how to wear an earring. Uh, but you know, you can tell me down below. Does anybody else do that? Am I the only one? I can't be the only one. I cannot be the only person in this world that's like, oh, hey, let's get those out of the way. And I pop them. I can't be the only one. Okay. I just comment down below. Or you can also comment and be like, no page, just no. To which Okay, fine. Right now from here, I don't have a new setting powder. So I'm just gonna go in with, what am I gonna use here? I've got them all sitting in front of me. I think I'll do a little Charlotte Tilsbury. This is the magic setting powder. So I'm gonna take this um, under the eyes and through the T-zone first. And just for a little added coverage over the rest of my face, I'm gonna go in here with my Too Faced Born This Way powder. It's just a pressed um, foundation powder. This is in the shade Cloud. 
I'm just gonna lightly kind of add that again just for some coverage. All right guys, so I just took a second here and I was playing around. I wanted to make sure I had the right brushes, so on and so forth. And I was unpackaging the bronzer, which I got obviously from Charlotte Tilbury. It's her new airbrush bronzer. And I don't know what I expected, but am I the only one that did not expect it to be this big? <laughs> like I opened this and I'm just like, D -d 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 damn, okay, this thing is huge. I think I expected it to be more along the lines of this, which is the original airbrush powder, which everybody loves. Obviously I have it. It's a good powder, but like this is a huge bronzer. It's like double the size. Okay. So just for a size comparison, like this is the original airbrush powder. This is the bronzer. Okay. <laughs> this reminds me of the feeling that I had when I opened up all the Fenty cream products and I was like looking at the blushes because they were so tiny. It reminds me of that, except in the opposite way. Like I just did not expect it to be this big. Like I have a big ass face, you guys, and this thing is huge. Okay. I promise I'm done now at this point. Let's go ahead and start talking about the bronzer itself. Let's start applying it. This is obviously for the 15th time, the airbrush bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury. I have it in the shade medium and I'm gonna be applying it with a duo fiber brush. This is from It Cosmetics and this is their 202 Flawless Powder Brush. So while I'm applying this, let's just go ahead and start talking. Um, I know the first question a lot of people are gonna have is why did I, with the pasty ass complexion that I have, why did I go with shade two? Because I was watching a girl apply it. She was super fair, just like me. And and she was applying shade one, which is I think the fair shade. Yeah, it went fair and then this is medium and then it was like deep and dark or something because I think there's four shades in the line and I was watching her apply the lightest shade and as she's buffing it into her skin, it didn't look good. Like it looked almost yellow toned on her. So I went back and I was looking at all the swatches because they had like the arm swatches and I'm like, why does that look so yellow? Because in swatch, it doesn't look that weird. Like it looks like a normal light tone bronzer, but I just could not get past that one, like as she's applying it, how yellow it looked. I say all of this, you know, this big long story just to throw out there. That's why I ended up going with shade medium right here because when I saw this one applied um, on the model, it didn't pull like weird. It didn't have a yellow undertone. It didn't have like a weird warmth to it. And I gotta be honest guys, this is like the exact tone I would want for a bronzer too. Like this was definitely the right call. And I'm just gonna go in here really quickly and add a little bit of this to the nose. This is my Kaleidos H1. This is a really, really nice brush for uh, for my nose contour, my light nose bronzing, if you will. And just a couple more things that I thought were interesting. I don't know if uh, any, anybody else would care about them, but I thought it was kind of interesting that they said um, on one of, I want to say it was maybe on Instagram I was reading, that uh, this powder was actually inspired by this original airbrush powder right here, which is why they named this the airbrush bronzer, because it's supposed to be like that same softness. And for me personally, Personally, because I have used this before, I know how soft it is, I know how coveted it is, and it is a very, very nice powder. So I was very skeptical of, you know, that whole thing, but what I'm feeling with this and like the softness, I can definitely see like the reminiscent feel there because it is unbelievably soft and it has a very nice like blend to it. It blends out um, almost like a velvety kind of blend where it just truly does airbrush. It doesn't give you like a harshness. There's no harsh line feel, which I really, really like. And that's something I like about this powder too. So it was definitely definitely good to have that. And uh, the other thing too, which of course they mentioned on the website and it does mention it on the box is that this is a refillable pan. So once you buy this, you know, this big component right here, which is definitely on the pricier side, I want to say this bronzer is like $55 or something like that. But uh, once you bought this compact, you can pop out the pan when you're done with it. There's a little hole right there and you can pop out the pan and then replace just the bronzer, which is really nice as well, obviously for eco-friendly reasons, you know, it cuts down on the waste and the packaging sort of thing, but it also cuts down on the cost because if you really like the bronzer, you'll be able to replace it at cheaper than buying just the whole component, which I thought was really nice too. All right, really quickly, I wiped off my lips and I'm going to go in with a little... Mm, I say a little bit, but y'all, I'm just getting after it. This is the uh, Honest Beauty Tinted Lip Balm in the white shade, but it's called White Nectarine. That's what it's called. It has like a glossy look to it. All right, beautiful people. So we are ready. It is time to move on to blush. Our lips are locked. They are loaded. They are luscious. And now I feel comfortable enough to introduce to you one of, you know what? No, not even one of. This is the most exciting product of the day for me. And it is the coveted, beautiful, stunning blush palette from none other than Lunar Beauty. And y'all... I am so freaking excited. Well, first of all, hold on, let me just pause. Manny is so sweet. He actually sent me this over in PR. He sent me the blush palette and three glosses. So huge thank you to Manny, Lunar Beauty, like all, all the team. You guys are super, super sweet. And I really appreciate you sending this over. I think it's amazing. But uh, beyond that, guys, like beyond the sweetness, I can't believe it. I was so shocked. I was so happy for him. This blush palette sold out so freaking fast. Like Manny, it sold out on his website, which I think is LunarBeauty.com. Yeah, it sold out on LunarBeauty.com 
Com super fast. Then it launched on Sephora and it sold out. I think it had like a pre-release. And then I think it sold out on Sephora again. Like this was such a crazy, amazing launch for him. And guys, there's a reason for that, okay? Like I, had, I don't even have to open this to explain to you the quality of the Lunar Beauty stuff. Like Manny, as far as like the products he comes out with, and I don't say this just because it, this was sent to me. I've talked about his products for a long time from the very first release and on. And I've always been very open and honest about how much I like his stuff. And I think it just goes to show like what happens, at least in my opinion, when someone that is actually passionate about makeup itself, when they create makeup, they create amazing makeup. Look at the presentation of this. Oh my God, is that not just absolutely stunning? Like each one of these planets is actually raised up on the um, on the carton itself. So anyways, we're at the moment of truth. We've seen it, we've heard it, we've talked a lot, a lot. And let's go ahead and unveil to you the blush palette. It does come with a full pan size mirror as well. And these are the shades. Oh my God, they're so good. You guys know, these are like my blush tones. If you, again, are new here, this is me in a blush palette. Okay, this is this is my jam. So really quickly, I just had to take a second and do this because I was going through here and I was swatching the blushes so I could like actually show you what the shades are. And these blushes are so soft. I just wanted to compare it to the airbrush powder that I have from Charlotte Tilbury. And guys, his blushes are like softer than this powder. I didn't even think that was possible, but just like feeling this powder, which is again, very soft and amazing, luxurious powder. Uh, but his blushes are like, softer than that. Like it's actually <laughs> unbelievable. Okay. I just had to find that out for myself. So moral of the story, these blushes are freaking soft. Like they feel velvety. Okay. These are the six shades. There is one right up here. That's very, very light pink. And then last but not least, we have the only shade that is not matte, which is this one. And uh, it has more of like a light shimmer to it. It's not an overwhelming shimmer. It's not a highlight, nothing like that. But uh, Manny in his reveal video, he kind of explained, which uh, him and I are pretty similar. I think when it comes to our blush preferences, he said that he prefers an all matte blush. And then he likes to work with it if he wants to add shine and that sort of thing. So in his palette, that's that's why he went with all matte shades and then one shimmer shade. For me, I'm really curious. I wanna test out the shade Twilight, which is like this corally shade right here, but I think it would look really pretty to like mix it with that shade, like do a coral pink. I think what I'm gonna do is take Twilight by itself first, which is the coral, and then kind of go from there. So this is just a fluffy wet and wild brush. I'm just gonna, oh wow, he wasn't kidding. By the way, he also said these are like super, super rich in pigment. So be mindful, like one dunk and done type situation and then just lightly apply. Oh God, that's a beautiful color. And from there, I think I'm gonna add on the other side, I'm gonna start off with this lighter pink shade and I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna flip my brush around. So right here is the other color. I'm just gonna flip it to a clean side and apply this other color, which again, more pinky toned. I'm gonna go in, oh wow. Okay, I might've went in a little bit heavy. Got it, got it, okay. <laughs> Manny wasn't kidding when he said, you don't need a lot and what do I do? Bink, bink. <laughs> <laughs> little overkill. Got it. Okay. Duly noted, but also don't care. Who cares? Can't, can't care. I love blush. Also, I just want to like let the record show this blush is almost like it's smoothing out my cheek texture, almost like um, how a finishing powder, like when I use the Hourglass Ethereal Light and I buff it into my skin, it's giving me that level of smoothness. Like this just, it's such a finely milled blush that it's also smoothing out my texture. That is amazing. I have, I don't know that I've ever had a blush that has done that nice of a smoothing job on my cheek. Then also, just because why not, I'm taking a little bit of that uh, that Soleil shade, which is the, the shimmer shade, the shimmer shade, and I'm popping that over top of my blush. If you are someone that struggles like I do with cheek texture and you're just, like your skin just isn't perfect in this area right here, this is a blush palette that you will absolutely love because it, it it's working wonders. Like I'm actually shocked. I just wanna brighten up under my eyes just a little bit. I'm gonna grab the Morphe Y11 and the KKW Brightening Powder in the shade one. And I'm just gonna pop a little bit of that here up under my eyes. All right, so now it's time to move on to brows. This is from Urban Decay and this is their Inked Brow Insanely Long Lasting Waterproof Brow Gel. And it says that it's good for up to 60 hours of wear, which I would probably never test because I actually take my makeup off every single day, brows included. And I thought it would be cool to test out. I have it in the shade Neutral Nana. It comes in this kind of a packaging. 
And then when you open it up, it has like a um, like a, a slanted tip, kind of like an eyeliner type tip. I'm not gonna be using the applicator that it comes with. I'm gonna use my ColourPop E14. And I think the way I'm gonna do this is just work off of this tip right here. I have a little bit here. Now this is kind of high stakes because it is more of like a stain for your eyes. So I'm gonna have to get, <laughs> it's hyper concentrated. So get ready for the concentrated page face because I'm gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be an intense moment, okay. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna just, I think, start by lightly shaping it out. I'm not going in with very much product. Start by giving myself like, okay, this is kind of where we're gonna go. This is the area we wish to be in, okay. It's very thin at the moment, but you can always build up. Okay, okay, I like this. We're doing good, we're doing good. So here is the first brow. It's not 100% finished yet, but uh, I think what I like most about this gel, like what's kind of getting me, is I like the fact that it's not just a straight, um, like how pomades are like 100% pigment, wham, you, you know, it's like a really intense, stark brow. I like that this isn't like that. It's more of um, like a soft, kind of watery gel type consistency, which, you know what I should do? I should swatch it for you so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Like, I'm just giving it a few swipes on, and you can see, like, it doesn't carry with it like a full, full pigment. It's not a full force type color, which I really like. I also better remove that right now, otherwise it's gonna stain my hand. Right, guys, so brow application is done. Like I said, I went in with the new Urban Decay uh, product. I did add my brow gel. I concealed out on the bottom. And overall, I actually think, I think I, I like this. I think that the, uh, the brows look really good. And my favorite thing about this is that it is a lot easier to control than I thought it would be. I thought for some reason it was gonna be like a goopy mess that went everywhere. But from here, it's time to go ahead and talk about eyeshadow. And uh, guys, I got a big one for you. I got something so crazy. It's it's huge. It's big. <laughs> Just kidding. It's this guy. <laughs> okay. This is what I have for eyeshadow. And I was actually very excited to test this. This is new from Nabla. I got it from Ulta. This is their Cupid's Arrow Full Color Stylo uh, Pencil. And I have it in the shade Arrow number two. And on the Ulta website, this just looked so beautiful. It's just like a brown matte crayon. And it looked so, oh my God, it's super creamy. Look at that. It's just like, oh, it's such a good color. But it looked so easy to use and it blended out so nicely. I saw like a little, um, a little picture video of it, I think on Instagram. And it just looked like it just, I don't know, like it blends out like a magic trick or something. So I wanted to test it out, see for myself. So what I'm gonna do for this um, eyeshadow pencil type situation, um, I think I'm gonna use it more as like a smudge along my lash line because I know in my day-to-day -day makeup life, that's actually something I like to do. Like I love the, the smoky type look. So I'm gonna grab just a little freckle here of my Hourglass um, concealer. This is in the shade Birch. It's the lightest shade of their concealer. And I'm just gonna put that all over the lid just to cancel everything out make sure it's a good even base just using any powder in front of me right now I still have my um, Charlotte Tilbury one open so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that and I'm just going to very very lightly set the entire lid just to make sure again we have a good smooth set surface that way when I'm all said and done with the um, color application I don't have to worry about like smudging over top of it to set the rest of my lid so I'm just gonna get that good and set down. And then from there, I'm gonna grab this pencil and I think we're just gonna throw it right along the lash line. It's super duper creamy. Okay, I'm just gonna take, I'm not doing like a very precise application. And then I'm gonna use this little fluffy brush. This is the BH number 17. And I'm gonna use this to just lightly smudge it. Oh wow, that actually moves so quickly. Like it moved really well. It's not streaky or patchy. That's really nice. And you know what else I'm really liking about this? This is such a soft type shadow. I honestly think you could blend it out without a brush and it would work just fine. Like it's very, very creamy. I like that a lot. Now that pencil is the only thing that I have for the eyes. And normally I would feel like I need to, you know, go in and like zhuzh it up or add some sparkle. And aside from doing an inner eye and a brow bone highlight when I get to highlight, I don't feel like I need to touch these at all because I think this pencil is exactly what I'm looking for in my life. Like that was so freaking fast. It was easy. It builds really nicely. It blends out like a, a dream with a brush. Like I am 
oh my god I'm actually surprised at how much I like that I was very skeptical um, if it that it would like actually blend out because I've used other cream sticks that um, when you swipe them and try to blend them out they're like thick and chunky and that one is literally like a, a pressed powder like in a pencil it just glides on like a powder so I'm very happy with that now from there we are gonna go ahead and move into highlight and keep finishing up the face and before I go in with any highlight you guys know the drill I like to spray my face so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of my NYX Bear With Me setting spray. Watcha! <laughs> That's right, y'all. I cleaned my room and I found my fan. Ooh, ooh, yes. Oh my god. Oh, oh. Now, does that mean I'm still not gonna use my mirror? No, but oh, this feels so luxurious. Hey, hey, hey. So initially, for highlight, I grabbed two different options and I think they both came in a boxy charm, so they're not like new items or anything, but they were items that I wanted to try, so I figured I'd just throw them in this video. Um, I have this one from Laura Geller. This is the Gilded Honey Baked Gelato Swirl Illuminator, and this I know has been out for a long time because it was huge before I ever got on YouTube. Yeah, okay, that might be a lot too dark. <laughs> okay, so hold on. We're gonna hold on to that. It would make a really beautiful eyeshadow, though, like as a single shadow. Very pretty. Uh, but I also have this right here. This is from Ciate, and this is a luminous highlighting balm. Actually, you know what? Never mind. This definitely isn't what I thought it was. It's, it's definitely got a glow to it, but this is more of like an oily type consistency, and I was kind of hoping it would be just like a regular highlight stick, kind of like the, uh, the color ColourPop highlight stick, which I use all the time. That one I can use, you know, when I'm done with my makeup and it looks beautiful. So never mind on this. I'll just I'll put that away and I'll use it different a uh, different day for something else. All right. So given the two choices that we have, I think I'm gonna try this one. But I do feel like it's gonna be too dark. But I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and at least try the color. So I'm gonna grab my Wayne Goss 14. Ooh, guys, that's beautiful. Oh, I like that a lot, actually. The color is definitely a little bit too dark for me. I can get, I can see a cast when I turn my cheek right there. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but there is a little bit of a darkened cast that tells me, you know, it's a freckle too, too dark, but you know what? I bet you I can maybe mix that a little and get away with it. That's a gorgeous shine, though. Holy cow, that's beautiful. Just because I can't stand it, I am gonna lighten that up a little bit here. This is my ColourPop Horse and Carriage Highlight. You guys know her all too well because I wear it all the time. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and very, very lightly graze the top of the cheek right there. Again, just to lighten up that gold tone just a little bit. Then I am taking just a teeny tiny little bit of that uh, highlight, the horse and carriage, and I'm throwing a little bit in the brow bone and a little bit in the inner corner. All right, now it's time to go in and add a few more sprays before we go into mascara. So first up, we have the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is my clinging. This is my long lasting. This is my oof, setting spray, the one that really helps lock her in. From there, I'm gonna finish off with a little bit of my Catrice Dewy Glow setting spray. Oh, this foundation. Oh, you guys. This is not a reflection of the setting spray. This is a reflection on this foundation, and I am suing. Okay, this... Oh... Okay, you know what? We're just not going to talk about it right now because, personally, I'm just not ready. I'm not ready to address <laughs> the, the crepe-tastic situation happening around my mouth. I'm not ready to talk about all the crinkly, wrinkly old lady lines that I've got going on right here. I'm 30, okay, and it's really showing today. Wow. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about mascara. I have the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes. This is her dual-ended one. So on one end, you have a curled wand, like so. It looks like it has the short, spiky little rubber bristles that, quite honestly, might make my eyes water just thinking about them. Because if you've never stabbed yourself in the eye with one of them, ho oh, ho, you'd rather take the spiked baseball bat to the eyeball than one of those. That hurts, okay? It hurts real bad. And on the volume side, we have this weird looking like tree type situation. It still has the same short stubby little, you know, rubber baseball bat bristles things going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, obviously we're gonna test out both sides. First things first though, we have to curl up the lashes. Y'all know I need all the help I can get. So let's grab my little elf lash curler here. Boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna go in with both sides. I think I'm gonna do volume over here and then curl and lengthen over here. So first up, let's try this spike baseball bat and uh, start going in here. Oh God, I get so nervous when the bristles are like this because I just, I don't want to stab myself. Okay, focus page, focus and concentration go a long way. I'm gonna do this in coat, so I'm gonna let that coat one dry and then I'm gonna go in over here with the curly side and see 
how this one looks. And I'll probably apply one more coat to each side for like two and a half maybe coats, maybe two, two and a half, whatever, whatever I'm feeling in the moment. And uh, I'll stop back on when I'm done and we will talk about how things are looking. All right, so I'm back. The mascara has been on and applied now for a few minutes. I just wanted to let it dry down before I came back on camera. And I have to say, I'm actually kind of surprised by this because I didn't think based on the profiles of the brushes that I would enjoy this as much as I do. But uh, the two sides actually are quite different, which is something that uh, I've noticed when I've tested out like dual ended mascaras like this, a lot of times, I hate to say it, but it's more of a gimmick. Like they both end up looking very similar. But with this mascara, they actually both do come out fairly different. I would say I noticed, you know, a more of a length and more of a, a curl on this side, which was what I used um, on, on this side of the mascara. And then for the volume side, I did notice, you know, that I had a thicker base on my lashes. They didn't look quite as lengthened as they did on this side, but they did have that thickness to them. The only thing that I do want to mention about this, which is something I didn't mention going into this, is that the mascaras do have volumizing fibers in them. So and I believe it's in both formulas. The volumizing one says that it has soft waxes and low gravity volumizing fibers to build volume without the weight. And then for the curl and length formula, it says that that has gripping waxes and five millimeter fibers for an immediate elongated effect. So just something I wanted to point out that if you um, have issues with that, you don't like having the fibers in your mascara or like they cause irritation because I know sometimes fibers do irritate people's eyes. Um, that's something I want to point out. So if you are looking or considering this, keep that in mind. And then just in case you, you notice it, because it is something I did after I was done with mascara, I did add some eyeliner. I have the Urban Decay uh, Perversion Eyeliner on the top just for a good black upper lash line. And then on the bottom, I grabbed my Fenty Liner. This is in the shade Purple Stuff. <laughs> okay, this is Purple Stuff. For lips, I have these three new glosses. You guys knew they were coming from Lunar Beauty. And I've talked about his formula time and time and time again. I think it is an amazing, amazing formula. Now in this collection, he did come out with three different um, like gloss, I guess you could say colors or depths of color. And uh, the first one right here is a very light, um, light in opacity, but also light in the color. This is the shade Moon. And then the second one I have, this is the shade Celine. And this one is like a clear gloss with gold sparkle. It's his original type formula. It's absolutely beautiful. This one out of all three, I think I've been wearing the most lately because I I just, I think this is the most flattering color. It's a nice light pink shade and it is so pretty. Like, look at ugh, the depth of that. It's just like the lightest. It's almost like a mauvey pink, but a very, very light mauvey pink. I'm going to go in with just this one, I think, by itself. Wait, do I need a, because mm, the eyes did turn out a little bit darker than I had initially intended. So do I need a liner? Hold on. Let's look here. Hmm. Actually, you know what? No, holy but Jesus. Apparently there's, you know, like a train a train flying over me. Could have went with plane, but instead I, I thought train would be better. Okay, so <laughs> that's enough of that. And with that, beautiful people, that is the full face, all done and complete. I wanna hear your thoughts and opinions down below, of course, um, on the products and everything, you know, as it kind of transpired. And to do that, let's go ahead and put up the up close so we can take a look at it together, see how things are coming along. And I think for me, the only thing, which again, I've talked about a hundred times, so I'm not gonna keep droning on about it, but I think my only issue at this point is the foundation. I feel like it just looks very settled. Like, I don't even wanna say that it looks um, like, necessarily, you know, it's too dewy or it's this or it's dry or it's cakey or whatever. It's not so much of that. For me, it just looks that it's just overly settled into my skin. And I really feel like from application to now, it just has a lot to do with the consistency and the emolliency of this product. I just feel like it has a lot of movement to it. So it just doesn't want to stay put on my skin. Like it doesn't want to adhere and stay in one spot. It has a tendency to move around. And I think actually to, you know, kind of double down and go one step farther, it actually makes me more impressed with the other products, especially the bronzer and the blush palette. Glosses are amazing. You guys know I love those. And honestly, even as far as the eyes go, the mascara and that little Nabla crayon that I used, I'll definitely, you know, keep working with them. But even those were really good and super impressive. So I don't have too much of anything to say negative, again, other than I'm not really like a fan of the complexion side, but everything else went really well. So you guys can let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, please feel free to check me out on Instagram and on Twitter. Subscribe before you leave if you have not done so. And all of the products that I use 
used in this video as well. If I didn't mention this yet, they will be linked in the description as well. So there's lots of other stuff to do, whether it's check out the products, check me out on Instagram, which I'm gonna just keep saying it because really you need to. Um, and subscribe, do all the good things. And I hope that you all have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. You ever just get an itch in your nose? like an itch, like an itch in your nose. And it is so far up your nose that you just want to take like a spatula and just, no, <laughs> it itches. And why would I pick a spatula? Gosh, that seems like a little, little wide, don't you think? The crevasses around the edge of my nose right here, honestly, you could fit a small family in there. <laughs> like mom, dad, little brother, little sister, <laughs> they're all hanging out right in that little crevasse on the side of my nose. Mm, it's not cute, it's not cute.